this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're looking into the second episode of Season 2 of The Muppet Show, which actually includes Zero Mustel. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with Zero Mustel, he is actually an actor and comedian of both stage and screen. Some of his most notable works would actually include playing Tave in the stage production of Fiddler on the Roof. In fact, he is actually the most recognizable person to play that role there. Uh, he has also appeared in the stage and film version version of a funny thing happened on the way to the forum and he is also known to play the original Max Bialystok in the Mel Brooks classic film of the producers and there actually is one dark thing to mention about Zero Mustel he is actually noted to be the only person to die before his episode of The Muppet Show would actually air on television. And keep in mind, yes, he is noted to be the only person to do so, like to have that credential. So it's a little bit morbid in a sense and a little unfortunate, but in a way, this would actually be a bit of his legacy, what we actually see in The Muppet Show. Now, going into the episode itself, I will say that everything that is constructed in there is actually great. Um, it does have a lot of great ideas, but unfortunately, at least for me, I feel like it didn't execute them as well as what it's originally planned, like what it sounds like. Because the thing is, is that this is kind of the ultimate battle between class and like modern entertainment in a way. Uh, it's a little hard to explain. Now, um, apparently Scooter's uncle who owns the theater, he would like to have lady wrestlers be featured on the, uh, like, on the show. Not, like, only for this one, not like as an ongoing thing, but just like to have at least one, like just to at least show some lady wrestlers. But the one person who is completely opposed to this is actually Sam the Eagle. And it does happen a few times when uh, Kermit and Sam would argue about this, but like this is the kind of episode that sounds great in theory. It sounds like a fantastic idea and to have Sam the Eagle to mo more have his own prominent episode that he can really feature himself as a man who is really of class and mostly like this would be Sam's first total appearance after like the whole Wayne and Wanda bit so like this is like post Wayne and Wanda Sam the Eagle but overall I feel like it isn't really as well executed because like it it, it often gets a uh, sidetracked with so many other things like in like we only see one part where Kermit and Sam would argue about this whole lady wrestlers thing and then uh, most of the time it's just Kermit trying to obey uh, Scooter's uncle's wishes and trying to make that happen and then he would recruit this like old granny that's also like this major pro wrestler and Kermit like has to then find like another wrestler to go with it. It's just, I, I feel like it does have a lot of potential but it isn't really the right way to execute it and like I previously stated it would have been fantastic if they would continue to argue to have like this ultimate battle between Kermit trying to make this happen to please the uh, Scooter's uncle and then Sam the Eagle who tries his hardest to push in class into uh, the show and not have the lady wrestlers there. Like it's I d it's great in theory but in practice it doesn't seem to work as well. It should have been a bit uh, it should have been better executed. But I'm not going to say that what came out of it is bad. It's more like it, it doesn't feel as great in terms of its structure, in terms of the story. What we got in terms of gags and stuff like that, they're absolutely fantastic. And um, now going away from that and going into the individual stuff, uh, a good example showing how class, like pretty much how class and sophistication is pretty much ruined in The Muppet Show, they actually have this opening act where we got, um, it was supposed to be this classical musical number of uh, Chopin's uh, Polonaise in a flat in A minor, I believe. Well, I, I don't know really the specifics, but I think it's that. Um, however, the uh, the musical group couldn't make it, so they decided to get the Electric Mayhem to do that little number in a jazz like this rock like this rock like jazz style, and it's actually really really good. I don't know, like maybe maybe it's just me since I'm more into like this. Uh, 
I'm more into rock and I'm more into the electric mayhem, but I don't know. Like, I think they did a really great rendition of it. Um, as for what, uh, I was about to say Peter Ustinov, but you know, the funny thing is, is that I don't know if it's just me, but I do find that there are a lot of similarities, at least in terms of appearance with Peter Ustinov and Zero Mustel. But again, that's just me. Um, going into Zero Mostel, like his bits, like he was pretty good in there. And there are some uh, good memorable ones, but there are some stuff that aren't necessarily as well executed. Uh, I'm just going to start off by saying, what do simple folk do? Like, I understand the whole bit. I understand the whole number. I just feel like it just dragged on for a while. I feel like they, it just, I feel like it's one of those sketches that it just felt like it was just going on and on and on and it doesn't feel like there really is much of an end to it just for this like one simple little like ending of that's what simple folk do it's just uh, I, I don't know like i wasn't really too much of a fan of it and uh at the same time though there is one great bit that did came out of it and it's actually a, a poem called fears and it's actually very very well executed by Zero Mustel. It is just beautifully done, honestly. Um, well executed, has the right tone for it. And funny enough, both That's What Simple Folk Do and The Fierce Poem, you could definitely tell that Zero Mustel, like, he could be a great Shakespearean actor. You can totally get that sense out of it, especially with what he wore in the What Do Simple Folks Do bit. Like, he could totally play like a King Henry or a King Richard. You could, like, he does have that Shakespearean King look. Um, but other than that, like, there was also a moment where Sam the Eagle would talk with Zero Mustel regarding having class and sophistication onto the show and how the Muppets are just disgraceful to class. And, uh, like, that whole bit is great. Like, not only does he see, does Zero Mustel can be a great Shakespearean actor, but he can also be a great goofy actor as well. Like, he has that, that right tenacity and the right tone to be, like, weird and over the top. A lot, again, a lot like Peter Ustinov in a sense, where he can be a great Shakespearean actor, but also a fantastic comedian. Like, um... What, like where Peter U where Peter Usinov can be great uh, in a comedic sense when he could be Prince John in Disney's Robin Hood. Um, like I previously stated, Zero Mostel can be a great comedian uh, just by being as Max Bialystok in the original producers. Um, uh, any other segments? Like I will admit that there are some pretty cute segments. Um, I will say that there is an at the dance sequence. And I gotta say, oh my god, the jokes have actually improved. They're no longer just bad, corny puns. Like, there are some funny moments in there. And, like, they somehow decided to go into the theme of tennis. And, you know, there are some good... Like, there actually are some well-executed Muppet-style jokes to it. You know, they're actually pretty good. It was probably the first time in a really long time that I actually genuinely laughed. Or at least get a few chuckles from an At The Dance sequence. And there is actually one thing that I will mention that is a bit of a milestone is that this is actually the first episode where Beaker would come in. They actually reintroduced the, uh, the uh, uh, Bunsen Honeydew bit and they decided to bring in Beaker. And the first one that they did so, at least in terms of the number of productions, um, they actually did the mechanical, no, no, not the mechanical, I mean the magnetic carrots. And that actually came out with some pretty good results. Um, nothing too crazy happened to Beaker, but it actually is pretty interesting that we see the first appearance of Beaker that would later go on to, to result in some great, uh, some great and memorable Muppet bits that would feature Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker. So, I would say that overall, this, this, this is, a, like, it's well executed, but it's not at the same time. In terms of the humor, the entertainment, and the gags, it's definitely great. It's all in there. It's definitely a funny episode, and it definitely is an enjoyable episode. But when it comes to the story and the structure of everything, it just doesn't feel that great. There are some parts that it feels like it drags on, and there's a lot of wasted potential in this. Um, it doesn't feel like it has a great story. It's just... Like, they focus a little too much trying to bring in this whole Lady Wrestlers bit that 
it just ends up falling flat in the end, at least for the lady wrestlers aspect. So, good episode, but at the same time, it could have been a bit better. But anyways, that is pretty much going to be it for this episode of the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see if the structure will be as good as the comedy and the gags at the same time with the next episode, so until next time, see you later dudes! Thank you.